Similarly, we also say about unified communication. This is nothing but Skype. But Skype on different devices. Similarly, I have context-aware system. That means the system was aware that yes, when the phone was kept, they were able to transfer the call or anything to a different system. This happens in the back end, unfortunately. It's not on the device. And for this technology, we need something known as NFC, near field communication. So NFC identifies devices, and Abhay sir can talk more about it because he yesterday he showed us a very good photograph of what we call RFID. NFC uses RFID a lot because it needs to know two devices are near each other. Multi-touch surfaces, I did not talk natural user unified communication. It's presented in a different way. That's what I wanted to show. This is a great example of software plus services. They must be having a Ford dealership here. You don't need to buy the car. Just go to Ford and ask them, I want to see the car with Ford Sync, S-Y-N-C. Now Ford Sync is nothing but it's a Bluetooth technology which transfers your phone. When you're driving the car, a call comes, it will come on the head mounted display. A call is coming from XYZ. Your contacts are completely read <coughs> by the car. So check out Ford saying, go with your parents, go with anybody, don't buy the car. But go and take a look at the technology, take your phone, enable Bluetooth and you will be able to fantastically see how it happens. That is what we call software plus services. That means Ford will charge you after three years on a monthly basis to use their service. First three years are free. Similarly, I have talked about federated authentication. What it means, and I will give a very simple example of what is federated authentication. How many of you have more than one email account? Great. And why was the need to create a new email account? One to chat with X set of friends, one for you know downloading, one for just some website wants an email ID to I don't need to even log in, I don't even remember the password. With federated authentication, now let's say you go to a website called Four Shared. You must have gone to Foreshare. Does Foreshare ask you to create an account now? No. What does it ask you? Just to Exactly. Using what? Anything. Facebook, Google, Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, any of that. That is what we call federated authentication, which means he says, why should I have to bother identifying who you are? I would rather use somebody else's setup which has already done all the you know background check that yes you are who you are and i will use that information so i don't have to worry about it that is what we call federated authentication i'm just putting some terms so that you can use this this presentation will be with you you can take it back now i'm really happy that all of you are using this technology so you'll be able to associate much faster with them then we call about context aware systems many times and this is, I'm sorry for this example, but this is the best example is on an Android phone. Have you seen that when you are in a bright daylight, the phone actually changes its yes. intensity. So what is it doing? Adjusting its situation. It's context of it. In what context it is being used? Now context necessarily need not mean English. Context can be, oh, is it being used outside? Or is it being used indoors? And based on that, the system adjusts itself. Finally, this all of you would know, GPS. It's available, India is one of the largest growing nations where GPS is used. And trust me, every city, there is a GPS map available. And there's a big company which is there. If you want, you can also write to them if you want to do a project because they take a lot of uh, students to do projects. It's called Map My India. So write to them that I would like to work on it. And they have these digital maps and they allow people to actually take multiple photographs and then they combine that information. What is the name of the website? Map My India. And what they do is they take the work which you do and they sell it. And if your work is accepted, you get money for it. So I have a friend who developed only one streak. And every time the software is used, he gets two rupees. Now, the idea is not the two rupees. The idea is the ability to say, yes, my work is in that software. And at a college level, if you can do something like that, trust me, if somebody comes to hire you and say, you, and you say, you know what, my software is used by Map by India or something like that, you are selling yourself. So fantastic way to look at it. Let me move on to this 
and let me go to the next one. This one is very interesting because there are multiple technologies. What is pervasive decision support? Nowadays, what we have started putting is we have started putting sensors everywhere. By sensors, how can a sensor be? There is a very good college project that somebody did between two traffic lights. They just put two sensors and it was just capturing the vehicles. And with that, he was able to find out the average speed of that place. So many of you will have this question, how is the speed limit 60, how is the speed limit 30, how is the speed limit 40? It's all done based by sensors because they see their braking required to stop in case of an emergency. So it's all science. Somebody doesn't put okay 80 minutes on the Can you put 80 on that big that road which goes before the bridge towards Big Bazaar? You can, but you'll never be able to drive. So it's impossible to put 80 kilometers there. You can't. Similarly, there is science behind when you go on a bridge. They say don't exceed 15 kilometers per hour. Because what we call what force is at action? I need the exact. It starts with C. Centripetal. Fantastic. So I'll get, get you get at this thing. Centripetal and centrifugal forces are made. So they measure that. I'm really happy, sir, by the, the knowledge which is there in this room. Fantastic. I, I love this. So we have this real, and then now, of course, dynamic content. I'm saying multiple technologies are being merged together to provide a solution. This is very interesting. Real time language conversation. How many of you used Google's transliteration tool? Fantastic. I, I see there is a section. Very good. Fantastic. So the transliteration tool for everyone benefit what it does. Let's say one of you have a... Remember in olden times we used to have this pen pals? We used to write letter and then send it to somebody and then after one and a half months we used to get the reply back. I'll tell you my practical problem what we face daily. The problem which we face daily is, I interact with a guy from Japan or China. When I type my message in English, I see typing. You can see that, correct? Now in Google chat, when you see, you can see other person. But I never get a response back more than 20 minutes later. The problem is, he is translating in his head first, what I have written in English into Chinese. Then he is framing his response in Chinese. But then his biggest problem is, Chinese to English conversion and writing. Google did a fantastic job. What they did was they did, there are two things here. One is real time language translation and transliteration. Transliteration means whatever you type, hello, will be converted into their local language, which means they still need to learn the language. Real time language translation is there from Google and other, but it's a paid service. What they do is they only fly convert. Now, how many of you gone, there used to be a, a website which used to put, if you go to a Chinese website, you put every, the text will be in Chinese and you say, okay, trans, you change it to English or something. Right? Many times we have these websites which are in Chinese and we want to, you know, read what is there in English. So you put it and it translates in English. That's real time language translation at work. So use this. Tomorrow, today only if you go to Google and go to some Arabic website or some Chinese website, you can translate it into English. What we have is cultural translation as well. That means translation earlier was one is to one. Which means if I wrote Roko Mat Jane Do, which means don't stop, let him go. But what I wanted to say was Roko Mat Jane Do. <laughs> the transliteration tool just changed it, correct? So think about Chinese guy shouting. Roko, mat jane do, and you are listening, Roko, mat jane do, you are saying, no, no, go run fast. So that is a common problem which we run into. So that is what we mean. What we mean by smart environments is, today, and you can say this is a blessing of technology or this is a curse of technology, anybody can be pinpointed where you are. I faced this problem the day I landed in Ranchi. Google immediately told me when I logged into my Gmail, whoa, oh, Intrusion. How come you are in Ranchi? You always access your mail from Bangalore. <laughs> now, if Google wants to know how they can now start selling to me, first Google knows I am in Ranchi. So what he will do? It will first throw those ads for hotels. Maybe you want to stay in a hotel. I disregard that ad. Now watch how I am using technology. So the first day I get, you are in Ranchi, hotel ads. Not interested. 
What is the next ad do you think it will show? I'll give you a price for that. Restaurants, fantastic. Because he knows I'm not interested in hotel. Maybe I already made an arrangement. But he will read somewhere. So next ad is restaurant. What's the next ad? So vehicles. Cabs. What's the next? Shopping. What's the next? Tourist places. Now where will Google make money from? So I'm trying to build some tech, some business into all of you so that you understand from when you ad. join jobs. From the ads. From the ads. So when you go and position your ad, I just within five minutes explained to you the business of Google. So the Google business model is, he will ask you if you have a shop, pay me 20 rupees a month, I will show it to the relevant people. He knows me where I am and he says, okay, wow, he's accessing his from Ranchi, let's give him shops in Ranchi. Now can somebody tell me how it knew that I am in Ranchi? I may not have GPS, good example, but I need another name. Sir, Fantastic. So another price for you. I'm sorry I'm not keeping a tab of whoever is winning. So, <laughs> we'll, 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 I'll come to that later on. But the thing is, fantastic IP address. So what it did was, I, I love this class. This is the most responsive class I've ever had. What it did was, I used my Airtel dongle. It gave me an IP address from a service provider in Ranchi. So from cell technology, it knew where I was. And it said, you are in Ranchi. How do I fool system into believing I'm somewhere else? Yes, Good. How do I do that? Others network. Others network. There is a specific term I'm list I'm looking for. Connectivity. Yes, connectivity. But how do I? How do I force? And this is what is the elementary of hacking 101. Configuration. Configuration. Yes. What config? What do I configure? An IC card. Very good. Proxy. I proxy or the NIC card. I say, you know what? I'm not connected to Intel. I'm connected to somebody in Russia. And system will say, oh, Russia, then immediately Google. <laughs> oh, he's in Russia, let me show him Russian ads. So he starts showing Russian ads for you. But the thing is, very good. And there's a tool which we use, and it's very important that you learn this tool. It's for hackers, and but we use it for ethical hacking to find out and stop hackers. It's called Privoxy and Tor. So you load these two tools, and what it does is, and it's a very important tool for you to see because that's how bank frauds are done. That tool will change your IP address and jump you from one proxy to another proxy every 10 seconds. So when they show in, in those English movies, you know, this guy is trying to find out who that culprit is and he's jumping from one country to another, you can do that. But don't use it too often because law enforcement in India knows about it. So don't use too much of privacy and talk. Then we have this, uh, I'm sorry, we have this cross device sharing, natural user interface, remote collaboration, these are nothing but I'm just changing the form factor. The basic technology is one, camera and transmission of video and audio. It's just that I changed the form factor. Let me go to the next one, which will be a little bit of interest. This is very interesting. Now, most interesting will be the shopping experience. And uh, I'll take email addresses and don't worry, don't bother writing these. I'll send all these links to you so you can visit. There's a company called Razorfish. And what Razorfish has done is, using your computer camera, if you stand in front of Razorfish, it can do what we call augmented reality. What is augmented reality? It, suppose you want to shop for shopping bags, ladies' hampers. You will stand in front of your computer, go to razorfish.com, and when you are standing, you say, activate my camera. And when you look at yourself, you will have a bag, shopping bag in your hand. So you can see how you will look with that shopping bag. <coughs> now, very simple concept. What is the concept? Canvas with image overlay. Very simple. So technology, always remember, we show all these fancy videos to sell. But the underlying technologies are handful only. It is just the permutation and combination of these technologies which result in this. So that's an example which, we, which I wanted to show you here, how that lady was able to go and shop. Uh, how many of you have seen the movie Minority Report? Anyone? I must strongly suggest you go and watch. It's a very old movie. It's about 19, mid-90s movie, Minority Report. That is one of the best movies where all these technologies you can see in 1990. 
And I may not be incorrect in stating this, the imagination of Hollywood has been fueling technology growth for years. How many of you saw Mission Impossible? All of you, correct? What was that eye scan which he did? Remember when he entered into the vault? So the first time he wanted to get into the vault, there was a red thing, he puts his eye and it gets scanned. Nowadays, they do the same thing for visa. So when you go to, let's say, Dubai, or when you go to UK, there is no passport stamping which happens anymore. You need the passport to prove your authenticity, that means who you are. But when you walk in, they don't use a retina scan, the red color beam is a retina scan beam. They use something known as an iris scan, which can be done from a distance. So uniquely they can identify who you are. Another thing, do they have a Nokia store here? Okay, please go into the Nokia store and ask him to show you City Lens. City Lens. What is City Lens? A beautiful example of augmented reality. So what he does is in City Lens, he puts, takes the phone and he'll put it into camera mode. He'll not do anything. So when it's in camera, it will show whatever is there. What he will do is, using image recognition, <coughs> he will try to identify based on the cells you are. The phone has to be on internet for that, unfortunately. Or connected to some network. And it will know that, okay, you are standing in front of ICFI. So when I was, when I can, I can bring that phone and stand in front of our building, it will show ICFI. So another good tool which you can use, and all of you, all of you must be having access to computer, right? Good. So download a tool called Photosynth. What Photosynth has done is, so a lot of people said that, you know what, I want to recreate the entire experience of standing in the middle of the Bombay BT terminal, Shivaji terminal, the old Victoria terminals. But when you go to VT, there's a rush. How will you take those photographs? And if you have to recreate that whole in three dimension, how do you do it? So what researchers did was they came up with a technology called Photosyn. Simple technology. It is nothing but stitching of pictures by putting them one top of another. Let me give an example. Let's say in one picture my hand is like this. And in another picture my hand is like this. Can they superimpose these two hands together and make one? They can, right? So let's say I take a photograph of this wall from this angle. So I take this door completely. But I take another photograph where I just take this red part. Can I join those two red parts and get a 3D view? Yes. That's what Photosynth does. So go to Photosynth. Every location in India, I was looking at Ranchi yesterday, has a photo sense. Your most famous monument, which is that? There's a very famous ashram here, right? So that, people have taken photograph of that and it's completely recreated in digital, digital without even paying a single penny because it's all user contributed. There's no charge for it. So you can do that at your home as well. Similarly, what we saw here was nothing but a the screen becoming larger. See, today your laptop is what? 14 inch, 15 inch, maybe 17 inch. These are just 52 inch or 72 inches. Now what one researcher has done, and you should download this software. He has kept a, a simple PC with his camera in front of a projector. And when somebody writes something, hello, it just captures hello. Please download that very small software. You can try it in your college itself. But a fantastic use of gesture recognition, it needs to know what is hello and the image rec recognition. So the other one which I want to show you quickly is, is I spoke about this particular technology, live content preview. That means when you will do shopping, TVs have now started coming with cameras. I don't know if you saw, but Samsung has one TV which says it can interact. And this, it has Skype integration. But Skype is just the beginning. Please remember this. The idea of having a camera in a TV is what? Which means that if I want to talk to my grandmother, I can send her that TV. She is not technology aware. Correct? She doesn't know how to use, but she knows how to switch on a TV. Moment she switches on a TV, Skype gets activated, I am able to talk to her. A beautiful use of technology. So you should look at these, you know, things around you. What is 
what is paining you and go and search somebody has done something about it so that is the same lady who's been projected there so that she can see herself in various wardrobes now going forward the next innovation which we will see is in shopping and shopping which is customized shopping so the system will know what your size is and it will give you the options to buy why they want to do that returns are limited you don't have to return because it did not fit you similarly these are flexible displays now one research institute which is like number one in doing all this is xerox xerox machine which is paisa per page bulk mein kamra i don't know how much it does here but bangalore it is all 25 paisa per page if you go to the high court bulk mein they book after book they will publish if you do it but think about a company which makes xerox machine it's actually a photocopy machine but we are so used to using xerox but the xerox is the company go to xerox's website and you will see the amount of innovation the company does and one place where if anybody of you want to do any type of innovation and research is their palo alto research center all they need is a new innovative thought that's all nothing else similarly here we saw that how augmented realities are merged together dynamic content views are merged together and so on so are you able to now relate a video which you saw about 30 minutes back which was totally out of this world is there anything out of that world you all knew about this technology but you were all stuck the way it was presented so if anybody in the marketing would have been there i would have told them this is how we market our products <laughs> products are very simple to use and they use common technologies today but it's just that we package it differently what i want to show you is some of the work which people do so this is a research work speech so good area for you all of you if you want go to microsoft.com/research entire software of that research is available free for you and it is available free for you to reuse in your projects for college projects there is no better website than codeplex c o d e p l e x codeplex.com thousands of people if you want to write an algorithm it is there and i leave you all with one simple test i will send a very good prize to the person or anybody who can actually write and send me over the next 20 days the code for sudoku solve all of you are aware what is sudoku yes. correct i want all of you to think how to write a code for sudoku and we'll, we'll judge it i'll i'll get my developers to judge it we'll see the code which is compact that means minimum lines that means you have thought about the algorithm do it after your examination please don't give an excuse that i might be not do it because there was a content which was being done but think about it the idea of writing that sudoku code is it will give you into insights into how to think an algorithm is implemented i'll give another example have you all heard of fourier transform mathematics you should have this fourier transforms the number one applicability of fourier transform is in your image editing tools adobe photoshop 70% it uses fourier transforms i never knew that till i went and met the guy who actually wrote that algorithm and asked him what is the you know the the holy grail of your algorithm this is nothing fourier transform i just modified it little bit to use and they paid him so these are some of the technologies which we use so we have this gesture device and so on in fact we run a contest worldwide which is called um microsoft's uh, talent hunt and the person who won this year's talent hunt was a person can you guess from which location in india just take this 26 guesses from states So Uttaranchal, how much technology will be there in Uttaranchal? You feel limited, very limited. That person has made an oscill a, a sonography device using a hundred dollar device, which can connect directly to any laptop in the world, and you can get sonography. What he did was he went to G. and he said i want to know how a sonography machine works and they said okay we have this complex machine like yeah, this 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 all he did was he says 
what is that one thing which sonography machine you cannot do anything anywhere else? The sensor. The heart of the sonography machine is the sensor. So he took that sensor, the cost of sensor is only $50. I was shocked when we were evaluating his, his thing. He went to Egypt after all and he won it at the highest level. So his thing will be available in rural India. And the government of India has actually taken that project. This is open for everyone. And will be implemented in every mobile clinic in India. All they need is a, you have those $100 machines, $5,000 ka laptop, kuch nahi karna, zero screen and keyboard, internet connection, and that apparatus and you can do sonography at that person's place. Now we asked him how did he envision this. So his problem was I had seen a sonography device. When I went and met with G and I talked to them, I found out the cost of a sonography machine is not the sensor cost. It is the processing cost. And what this person who had no access to technology or very limited access, he went on internet and read only one thing, cloud computing. But his imagination was, I will put my processing on cloud. So yes, it takes about a minute to see the result. It's not instantaneous. But $75,000 machine versus a $200 machine, which will be used in rural India for so many patients. It can be used on animals. It can be used on human beings. A beautiful. So please think. You are the thinkers. Mm -hmm. don't, don't, please don't mind. <laughs> these, these are the next thinkers for us. I mean, you are the you are what will take India to the next level. Uh -huh. So I wanted to share that. Then we have this whole authoring and other things. These are some of the other technologies which are already shipping. This is a photograph I took from Samsung, and Samsung has already created a flexi display, which means you will be able to do it. You know, use it the way you want. You can wrap around. You can just fold it and take it in your bag and so on. And of course, there are three-dimensional displays and other things which are coming. I have given all these institutes. Mapping. Earlier mapping was so difficult, but today if you look at it, when I came to Rachi for the first time in September, I was very scared. How will I come? And I did one thing. Let me go on Google map and see Rachi. And what Google told me was, I just put one thing. Airport, ICFA Institute. That was my keyword. And it made me a red line. And it, I said, okay, print. You know, driving directions. So it told me, okay, I'll be a bridge aayega. So I was sitting with this piece of paper <laughs> in Ranchi, traveling in that auto rickshaw, flipping through the pages on the rickshaw, I'll get a bridge aayega. Bridge se utre haan, utre chalo, ICFI left me aayega. And it showed me the building photograph. All done. Fabulous technology which you can use today. So please explore technology as much as possible. This is nothing but motion eye. It was something which... Uh, Sony was trying to sell as part of this, but Nokia has a better version. There's a beautiful ad which comes. Can somebody name that ad which has this technology? It comes today. I can't hear. Very good ad. So wallet gives out. He says, they can get photograph photo yes, in that. Yes. What is that? There is nothing but this. Right? He just take that photograph. Only thing they are packaging it. Unnecessary elements are too many. But the idea is with the photograph, you take that photograph and it tells you where the photograph was taken. That is all practical applicability of these technologies. I'm sorry. I'm sure you would have seen those projection displays now. Think of the past. There was a very good ad which used to come, Subramaniam, Aluminium, and the guy had that torch phone and it was playing video, correct? So what is that? That is now technology which is available every handle and I asked the cost of that phone. Can you guess what was the cost of that phone? I was shocked to hear the cost. It was 2500 rupees. With a projector. The spice, correct? Yes. 2500 rupees is giving you a cell phone, is giving you a torch and a projector. And technology has come. Now, what you can do as a science research or as a, as a you know, as your college project, take that device, disassemble it, and connect and maybe try to build something out of it. The projector itself is more than 2500. I don't know how they were able to sell it. So that's one. Of course, this is all content creation which we have. These are device interactions. We multiple screens you would have seen people using. 
This is interesting. When two people talk to each other, Cisco had shown this with their what we call telepresence technology. So there was a technology. Nowadays, this is available to you. How? Skype. It's just that we are putting it in with a lot of, you know, extra features. In, in our term, we use a very crude word, a mask for it, but we put a lot of lipstick and powder on it. <laughs> and we make it look very beautiful. But the underlying technology is what? Skype with a different user interface. Nothing else, right? Similarly, in meetings now, of course, I'll show you one more video. This is, I have taken it from that video, so you'll see that. Uh, let me just quickly go ahead of it. I'll leave all these behind. So, and there are some footnotes given there which will help you. This is an Xbox controller, which I was mentioning. Extremely complex. If you give it to the hands of all of you, trust me, you will take a day to understand. You give it in the hands of a child, five years, six years, he will probably be master in one hour. But to break this divide between five year old and 25 year old, we created something known as a, a motion sensing device, which was called your Kinect. So Kinect recognizes it has got a three-dimension lens. So these two are three-dimensional cameras. So it can do depth measurement. And using that, it can do. Now I'll show you one technology enhancement. And this, by far, to me, is one of the most sincere and the best technology ever. The toe mouse. We have been using mouse. What about people who don't have a hand? Somebody thought about it and created a toe mouse. One of the most beautiful pieces of invention. I cannot see an example better than this. There are so many people who are disabled in India. There are so many people worldwide who have got challenges in learning and hearing. If you can develop something for them, that would be the biggest contribution to the society. We all will grow in our own professions. Trust me, all of you will be well off. I can guarantee it. Computer science guarantees that in a way. At least you will have an air conditioned office to work in. Not for you call the computer. <laughs> but at least you will have that. And you will be always in an AC environment. And you will never be with any bubble. And everybody who will come will be educated, will talk English to you. Correct? That little thing. But this by far, according to me, and it's my own personal this thing. Somebody thought that yes, there are people who don't have arms and they want to use computer as a low cost. There are more expensive computers available. This is sold for 400 rupees. So technology need not be expensive. It is the application. Somebody thought, mouse hath use karta, pair me use karne kya jata hai. Necessity is the mother of invention. Any invented this and he sells it for less than 10 dollars. So I have those details. But it's a fabulous use of technology. So with that, I just want to tell you how we have moved ahead in life. And why we keep I'm telling you go to basics. Man started with his finger, old caveman, then we had some pointing stick, quill, pen, then pen quill got converted into a brush, light pen. Graphics tablet, you write with the Samsung One Notes and others, you see that guy doing in the ad. Typewriter, mouse, trackball, keyboard, track point, joystick, game, this, that, that. Finally, we are back to finger. So there is always a full circle. So that is why your basics will always be most important. So man through evolution. And I want one of you to solve this challenge of mine. Can you please create a new keyboard? Because for the last 40 years, the only thing which has not changed in computers is keyboard. In the moment. Your keyboard remains the same. Nobody has been able to crack that. No, there is a virtual key keyboard. So. Keyboard. Still, Still the keyboard. Is keyboard has not changed in 40 years. Same layer. Now it's what? 125 rupees, correct? Yes, sir. And my suggestion, if you have younger brothers and sisters, please don't stop them from using computers. Maximum they can spoil this 125 rupee keyboard. But by stopping him, you are killing one important thing in that child which is there. The curiosity to know why. So please don't stop. But please don't stop who are younger to you who want to learn. Let them use computers. You can't, you can't break a computer technically if you really ask me. Oh, Hollywood's me, he does this and boom. There is some smoke coming and suddenly everything got fair. Real life. 
So, what are the technologies? I just want to just yeah. Show me the picture. This what are these WII That is B. So, there's a company called Nintendo. It created a gaming device called V. And V had a beautiful thing that it was a device like this, but it was motion control. So it knew that I'm moving my hand, and people could fight with it. So before Kinect came, dance mat, V game pads were there. But then again, we are back to finger. So we started with the finger, and we are back. This is a very good paradigm. One of our friends shared it with me. What I want to leave all of you behind is with all the technologies which you saw today. My question to you all. After seeing the video, after me helping you interpret it, do you know any of these technologies? You probably know all of it, right? So my the reason why I wanted you to take the thing was the purpose. What I thought was take the fear out of technology. All of you know it. It's just that we are not communicating about it, or we are not talking about it. So talk about technology. The more you talk about it, the more you polish yourself. All this we have made to make our lives more miserable. And to protect jobs, that is my fundamental. Thing. Somebody will come and say, "You know what I did? Ubiquitous computing using context-aware systems." I just lost all of you, right? So at that point, what you should reply? Yeah, but we were using biometric security with dynamic data visualization. Do you know about that? <laughs> so counter technology with technology. So I'm going to leave this deck. I'm going to leave all of these. Please replay these videos again and again so you can now associate each of the technologies. And trust me, this is the latest in innovation what we have today. This was a video which Corning made in 2011, January 2011. So it's about two years old. So that company, a glass company, had the vision to create a video like that. I just want to leave one thing with you, and this is a a video which we have created, which is a newer version of the video. And now you tell me, how difficult is it for you to understand this video? Go ahead and we have a deck which we have, a slide deck which will explain all these technologies once again. But given the kind of knowledge all of you have, and I'm really thankful to all your teachers because they are so good, sir, amazing. I've never seen a better class than this. I'm sure you will not need to see the deck. You will talk about technologies one after another. So I hope you got an idea about how we present technology, but what are the various underlying technologies? Majority of you have used technologies. It's just that we don't know the right words which are used for it. So with that, I leave you to a world of future, and I'm sure all of you will be contributing something in that. Okay? Thank you so much. Thank you.